What's up, you guys? I'm back again with the. <laughs> a mess. All right, welcome everybody to my channel. I am Royal J here, and today we are going to be talking about Bridgerton. I'm not going to go in depth of every each and every episode. We're going to talk about the show overall and my opinion of what I thought of it. So it may seem all over the place. I may be talking about this, this, that, and that, but it's just we're going to breeze through it because it was a whole eight part, you know. And if I talk about all eight episodes, we're going to be here for a very long time. <laughs> so we're going to talk about the producers of the show who made this show possible so let's go ahead and talk about it the producers that we're going to talk about i'm going to show them right here everybody so the first executive producer is betsy beers chris van uh Dusen, julie ann robinson and shonda rhymes now shonda rhymes is one of my favorite like she's just great um, she did How to Get Away with Murder and Scandal, which is two amazing, great shows. And I miss them so much. Chris Van Dusen and Shonda Rhimes have been working, have worked on a few things together. They've been longtime friends. So they came together to do this show. They did a, a pretty good job, but we're also going to talk about some things. We're going to get into some things. The show, in my opinion, from what I've saw, and just to be clear, this is a spoiler. So I'm going to be spoiling the show if you have not seen seen it pause this video keep it in your history or add it to your watch later and go watch the show finish it and then come back or if you don't care about spoilers then hey just watch it so from what i got from the show of watching it it's basically about this girl who well many of the girls who mothers are trying to get them to marry wealthy men it kind of seems like they're pimping their daughters out and it's really weird to me and it's creepy it's in this climate it's very creepy i'm sure those were the traditions those were the norms back then but right now that is a bit creepy i don't like it <laughs> we have simon bassett who is the duke and his love interest is daphne bridgenton so you have these two families right these two households that are like the main focal point of the show you have the bridgetons and you have the featheringtons so the bridgetons they kind of have a little bit more freedom in their household they kind of just do whatever they want to do <laughs> the kids is running wild they just bad as heck it, it, you know like i said like they have a lot of freedom so you have the featheringtons where they have no freedom they are they are controlled by the mother they are told what to do what not to do how to talk how to dress how to act and so many different things I could not stand the Featherington's, okay? So, and I'm gonna tell you why. You have this girl by the name of Marina. Miss D Lord Featherington, I believe he owed her father or something like that. The father did not want Marina at all. So he shipped her over there to the Featherington's in London. Mrs. Featherington wanted her to marry, to hurry up and get her out the house quick. She didn't want her in the house. She was so mean to her, y'all. Like, she was evil to that girl okay marina came in and she wasn't welcomed with open arms they were mean to her they didn't like the way she dressed they didn't like her hair they didn't like anything about her mrs featherington hated that girl i didn't like it so she was just trying to get her to marry these weird looking men that she just was not connecting with she even took her to a rough neighborhood like this is going to be your life if you don't marry if you don't marry and you don't go on with your life this is what's going to happen to you. There's a major little thing with that. But let's talk about Daphne and Simon. So Daphne and Simon, they kind of bumped into each other. They didn't really, at the beginning, they wasn't really liking each other like that. But you could tell there was some form of chemistry that was going to go on as the show progressed. Long story short, they end up falling in love. <laughs> Daphne's brother, which is Anthony, ha uh, I don't know why I was going to say Anthony Hamilton. I'm so sorry. Anthony Bridgington did not want her with a Simon, which is the Duke. He didn't want her with any guy. They would go to balls, they would go to party, they would go to these different places, and every time she looked at a guy that she was interested in, he did not like them. He was just like, no, you don't need to marry him, he's broke. No, you don't need to marry him, he's ugly. No, you don't need to marry him, he has a fake tooth. No, you don't need to marry him, he has a false leg. Like, it was just anything he can point out. He just didn't want her to marry. I was just like, okay. But then when he did decide to a guy that she did not like he was funny looking he was weird he was creepy he looked like he was hiding pickles underneath his tongue but yeah after that 
um, they end up coming together to come up with this plot and this scheme to basically manipulate everybody, make them think that they're together, they love each other, there's a connection, they possibly want to get married, all of these different things because they were under so much pressure to marry and they kept trying to connect her with men that she did not like. Um, the Duke told her that, hey, if we do this, I can't have children and I can't provide the life that you desperately desire. She settled but she ended up getting what she want in the end of course that's how it always happens so they end up falling in love getting married all of this different stuff they have in intercourse throughout the entire house upstairs downstairs outside inside just anywhere you could think of <laughs> it's like they literally did it in every room except the baby room the nursery so um she didn't know that simon which is the duke had to release I don't know if I want to talk about that. <laughs> I don't know if I want to mention that in this video because, you know, YouTube do not play. So we're not going to go too far, but she did not know that the Duke had to release something for her to get pregnant. Um, When they would have intercourse, he would go on the side of the bed. He would hurry up and release elsewhere <laughs> because is awkward because he didn't want her to get pregnant but he kept telling her that he couldn't get her pregnant but he really could he just didn't want to because he went through this trauma and that is something that i'm going to talk about in this video as well um he went through so much trauma and his father was really mean to him his father called him dumb because when he was younger he had like a, a speech problem he couldn't speak he couldn't talk he would stutter a lot so his father called him dumb and was just like he didn't want him get him away from me like he was an a-hole to his own child um he never got to meet his mother because his mom ended up passing away after giving birth to him he didn't even have his father in his life you know and then we have mrs lady uh dunbury i believe her name was yeah she took care of him uh put him through school she stepped up when the father decided to step down she did a really good job um but he still carries some of that trauma with him and it affected him in his day-to-day -day life grew up his father ended up getting ill and was getting ready to pass away promised his dad he swore to his dad that he would not carry the name he would not have children he would not get married he's just not going to do it so he stuck with that for a very long time but when he fought, fell in love with Daphne all of that kind of went out of the window so she one day they were doing the do and I'm sure she's going to probably have to sit in the chair if you know you know she's going to have to sit in the chair and not allow the chair to move for that to actually happen and that's what she did in one of the episodes and he was highly upset with her he felt like he was being manipulated he felt like really did a lot of her and it was just like could have just told her hey i made a promise i swore that i wouldn't do this so i'm not going to do it and i'm going to stick to that so when she did find out um she was upset you know you're going to let your past hold you from loving me how she found out was because one of the maids i believe um she was having a conversation with her and she was telling her about father and with his mother and how for so long that the duchess wanted to get pregnant and have a baby but she didn't know that the duke would have to release the seed and when she was sitting there and she was telling daphne about it daphne got upset that's when that happened so when she went home after finding out when she got the the report like with lady whistledown like they would get these little newspaper things or whatever it was kind of like the shade room of back in the day get these pieces of paper like something like a newspaper just full of gossip see i skipped past all of that so marina was pregnant when she got there she ended up bleeding on the sheets and one of the maids found out and told mrs featherington and that's how mrs featherington found out she was pregnant so she was really trying to get her to marry so she could put the baby on the husband so they wouldn't know that she was pregnant from a guy who was fighting in i believe spain <sighs> y'all was a mess penelope featherington was in love with one of the Bridgerton. But one of the Bridgertons, I forgot his name, he ended up being in love with Marina and he wanted to marry Marina. They were going to get married, but Penelope got upset and she ended up blasting it to, and I knew that she had something to do with it. I felt it in my spirit, like she had something to do with what happened and what was going on. So it got back to Lady Whistledown that Marina was pregnant 
and it wasn't from the Bridgerton. She ended up crying once all of that stuff came out. She ended up going to El Eloise, which is a Bridgerton, and crying to her about it. And I was like, yeah, she did it. She had something to do with it. I know she had something to do with it. Daphne ended up going back to London to be with her family to help them with this whole scandal that's going on with them. I was like so mad. And it came out that towards the end that they, I guess they were trying to allude to the fact that she was Lady Whistledown or whatever. I was so mad. I knew that Penelope was going to tell. I knew that she was going to say something about it. Part of me was upset with her for doing it, but then part of me was kind of like, yeah, that's kind of wrong to put a baby on someone that it does not belong to them. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just kind of wrong. And I was like, okay, I'm, I'm on Penelope's side with this, but I'm like, that was messy. So it really kind of made the whole environment just strange for the Bridgertons and the Feathertons. So when they was going to parties and stuff, it would just be awkward and weird. And then the Feathertons, they got kicked out. I don't think she's really Whistledom. I feel like she just knows who Whistledom is and she may be working with Whistledom. I don't feel like she's Whistledom. Because when you look up the cast of Bridgerton, you would see Julie Andrews is the narrator of the show. She's the lady who's talking throughout the show, telling the stories and everything. And she's lady, labeled as Lady Whistlenom. So I do, I feel like I'm like all over the place, but if you watch the show, then you get it. <laughs> then you get it. The first intercourse scene that Daphne and Simon had was really creepy. It, was, it wasn't it was creepy, but it was just very awkward to me. I was watching and I was just like, what am I looking at? Like, what am I watching? What What's going on here? Um, make it stop uh i feel uncomfortable like i was watching it at work and i literally grabbed my phone and i heard to cut it off because i was like oh no i can't have no one see me watching this so it was not suitable for work <laughs> they end up getting having a baby getting pregnant and everything and she ended up giving birth at, on the last episode now we're going to go into my concerns of the show um my problem was a lot of the melanated characters are, you know, cast on the show were either dealing with heavy trauma, they were, people were really mean to them, or they were kind of like the help, like they was in the background. You know, they didn't really have like a huge major role, and the ones who did have a major role were very light-skinned, they had a particular body type, which you will see in every movie and show. We have these instances where these movies and these shows speak on representation. And a lot of times, there's not a lot of representation there. But all of the dark-skinned characters were in the background. They were fanning people. They were way in the back, just talking or doing whatever. Like, they didn't really have major roles. I wanted more Black characters who have more than a few words. I just wanted more. I wanted to see us more. I wanted us to be represented more. It was a good show. The storyline was good. The plot was good. Everything was great, but the acting was good. The, the costumes, the hair, the every the angles, and just everything about it was just beautifully done. There was a part in the show where Lady D Danbury, Don Danbury, I believe, and Y'all know what I'm talking about. She was coming in with that stick. It was just walking through. She said something in the show that was beautiful, but I wanted more. She spoke about the separation of color, and I love that. But I would put the clip in the video, but I do not want this video to be taken down or hit with anything, so we're not going to put that in there. I didn't like the fact that the plus-size character, was, which is Penelope, was being mistreated you know, and how they was making fun of her. And it's always like when you see plus size people in the show or in movies, they're always the comedian or the butt of the joke. I want to see more with Marina. I hope next season we get to see Marina in love. I hope we get to see Penelope in love. I hope we get to see, if we had a, uh, a character which was in the show, and I'm definitely going to mention him and he's going to be up here, Will Mondrich. So Will is a boxer who I should have said him first. <laughs> I should have mentioned him first. But he's a boxer who boxes to make money to feed his family and take care of his family. He's cool with the Duke. They're friends. They box. They practice. They Like, they're real close friends. And whenever the Duke is upset about something, he need to get something off of his chest, he will go there and they will box. I liked it. I liked his character a lot. Of course, 
they made it where he wasn't as wealthy. You know, he didn't have this grand home. So I was upset about that as well. I will see you guys in the next video. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe and follow my social media down below in the description box and click the bell to be notified when I upload. And I will see you beautiful and amazing individuals in the next video. I was practicing an English accent to do for this video, but it was horrible, so we're not gonna do that. Yes, the video was all over the place, but I hope you guys liked it. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.